Hey folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner for another Windows Server 2012 R2 video. Now, Windows Server 2012 uh, comes with, you know, some some uh, cosmetic stuff, I guess. Uh, we talked about that in the past. First, let me introduce you to one thing uh, is DNS, and we're going to be talking today about zones, about setting up a zone. Now, what is a zone? Um, and I don't know why they didn't name this exactly what it is. A zone is any other domain name uh, that you're going to be using, either internal or external. So to set up a zone here, we have DNS Manager open already, and I'm sure you can find it under the Admin Tools. And make sure it's installed on your particular server, DNS Manager. And we already have the primary zone, which is home.local. So anything in our home.local uh, domain is going to be uh, dynamically populated into this list as A records. Now, dynamically means uh, automatically, right? So if the computer, uh, if you put a new computer in your domain, it's going to populate into your local DNS, into the, the local, the home.local. Or if you set up, I set one up here called myserver.org. So if you have a domain and it's called myserver.org or whatever your internal domain name is, remember a lot of folks use this home.local as their internal domain. I kind of just make one up. Now you don't want this registered uh, with you know with the uh, with with all the DNS servers out there. You don't want it. Re you don't want a registered domain name that you're going to be using for your internet website and your email. This is just for internal stuff. Now let's take this one step further and say, well, now we're going to, um, maybe we're going to set up a couple different uh, domain names that we're going to host. Uh, maybe we're going to host some different websites. And we talked about that earlier at putting multiple websites onto one server. We talked about that in one of the videos. You can go back to the YouTube videos and check those out. But today we're going to say, well, now we're going to set up multiple domains and we have to address the, the DNS issue. So if your server happens to be your root DNS server set up with your registration, when, when you go to GoDaddy or 101 and you set up your domain name, you say, where's my DNS uh, located? And you're going to point it back to your own DNS server. You're going to have to come in here and set up zones. So to do that, let's go under the forward lookup, forward lookup zones, right click on that and say new zone. And this is your new zone little wizard. Click next. Is it a primary zone, a secondary zone, or a stub zone? Now, the stub zone, I really don't use this much. It copies a zone containing uh, only name servers, uh, the start of authority, the SOAs. What I use primarily is the primary zone for any new domain that you're hosting, or secondary zone, and the secondary zone creates a copy of the zone that exists on another server. This is really nice, and you should, if you have uh, more than, let's say you have more than 50 or 100 workstations in your domain, you should probably have two domain, uh, two DNS servers running on two different uh, actual servers themselves. And a secondary zone will copy it over, and we've talked about that in the past. What we're talking about today is a primary zone. So create a copy of a zone that can be updated directly on this server. Next. Okay, to all DNS servers running on domain controllers in this domain local home, that's what we want. So click next. And now give it your, your name. So let's say this name, this particular name is going to be um, um, uh, myautoparts.com. Okay, so this is a website you registered, myautoparts.com or whatever it may be. Click next. And allow only secure dynamic updates. That's what you want on this one because basically what you're doing is you're going to be um, not using this as a domain controller. We're using this as our actual uh, DNS server for this actual domain name. So you could even say instead of allowing secure dynamic updates, do not allow dynamic updates, right? Because this is a manual thing. We're going to put the records in manually. Let's click next and just click finish. And now you'll see that you have it here, myautoparts.com. So now you can go in here and create that A record. We can go in here and so give us our first pointer, our new host. And this says you see the root domain there. 
is uh, myautoparts.com. You'll give it the I IP address here, whatever your local IP addresses uh, are, because don't use an external IP address, folks, because you're going to map that through your firewall. So you're going to do some static mapping with your outside IP address to your inside. So we're using inside addresses here. Uh, and then with the magic of the firewall and with the mapping, we can map it together. 192.168. Dot, let's say the server's at 1. Dot, I don't know, 10. Create the pointer record and click Add Host. Okay, so there it is. Now we have that pointer. So now you would go to your firewall, put your external address in there, or, or your routable IP address, uh, and you would map it, do a static mapping to this address, and then it will pick up this DNS server, and then you can start adding DNS stuff in here. You can add stuff like your MX records. You can do your mail exchange records in here. Um, child or host name. I usually call mine email. So it's email.myautoparts.com. Uh, fully qualified domain name uh, of the mail server. And um, you can put the same thing in there. Um, the email.myautoparts.com. Uh, and the priority level is 10. 10 on an email priority level is the highest level. If you have backup email servers, it may be 20, 30, 40, 50, and so forth. Click OK. Now we have an MX record. So now our email will know where to go to get into our email server. So that is how to create another zone. And if you want to create another zone, you can do it just by clicking on the forward lookup, new zone. Just go right back through this wizard again. Create a primary zone. Uh, yep, DNS servers. The zone name is, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, we fix computers.com. Maybe you have that domain. Click next. Again, do not allow dynamic updates and finish. And now you can see here where we have the other domain name. So again, with one DNS server, you can set up multiple zones. And remember, a zone is a domain name. Uh, that's actually pointing back to your own servers. So it's very easy to do, and uh, it doesn't take much time. Just remember that these are not dynamically updated. They are manually updated. Folks, if you want to really, really get into the meat and potatoes of Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows Server 2008 R2, please check out my online courses. And you can find those very, very simply if you just go to go here if you just go to classroom dot jacks tech corner dot com once again it's classroom dot jacks tech corner dot com you can see the classes the vmware esxi course uh, windows server 2012 r2 and windows server 2008 r2 this will give you the meat and potatoes of uh, learning all there is to know about these operating systems and these servers so you can even get more out of them. I mean, we spend a lot of money for them, so why not learn everything you can learn about them? Folks, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my videos, spread the word around out there, and I'll talk to you next time on Jack's Tech Corner for another Windows Server video update. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.